that's breaking me down I get so lost I think I'll never be found And there are moments of fear and doubt Even the best fall to the ground I am a mess, I am a wrecking ball I must confess that I still don't get it all Lord, I believe that all your words are true Doesn't matter where I'm going if I'm going with you I press on, I press on, I press on When I still don't get it I see the world through my jaded eyes I get frustrated when there is no why I put my focus on worthless things Even the strong fall to their knees God only knows what we all need I am a mess, I am a wrecking ball I must confess that I still don't get it all Lord, I believe that all your words are true Doesn't matter where I'm going if I'm going with you I press on, I press on, I press on When I still don't get it Life goes on, life goes on But your love will prove All I need, all I need I will find in you Life goes on, life goes on But your love will prove All I need, all I need I will find in you I am a mess, I am a wrecking Thank you for this day. We've, we've come here to just worship your name. Hallelujah. Thank you for each and every one that came out today. May you bless them. I know you'll have a blessing for them all day long. Hallelujah. Thank you for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, you might as well go on and get excited. We're in the house of the Lord. Amen. Woo! When this world Talking, talking. 
walking with the Lord on my knees. I just speak His name, the name above all names, and He takes my hand. Here I go, here I go, here I go. I go walking, walking with the Lord on my knees. I go talking, talking with the Lord on my knees. I go walking, walking with the Lord on my knees. Walking, talking, talking with the Lord on my knees. Every day when I pray, when I pray, oh, walking, talking with you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 When we used to go to church and feel the spirit of the Lord, our needs were met when on His name we called. In his house we worship in one mind and one accord. Oh, how the blessings they would fall hard. But now it seems so hard at times. Keep this old world off my mind. Even little hills seem so tall. Then my mind goes back to Calvary. Where the Savior died for me. And it's not so hard to praise him after all. It's not so hard to praise him. Well, thank you all. As the Lord would pour them out, that song of praise would seem to be so strong. Then some brother would testify and make you want to shout of how we've been with Jesus all day long. And singing another choir seemed to usher in the fire. Why you can't feel that spirit roll the wall for the strength that I'd acquire. Though I'd come to church so tired, it wasn't hard to praise him after all. Well, it's not so hard to praise him when I think of all he's done. I gave his life for all mankind and where he brought me from. When I think of all his suffering, my trouble seems so small. It's not so hard to praise him after all. It's not so hard to praise him when I think of all hug next leg folks know you're glad to see them in the house of the living God hi everybody glad you're with us today in an exciting time of worship and praise before 
a mighty and glorious God. Well, we serve a mighty God who can do extraordinary things. I pray today that you are overwhelmed by His presence, by His power, by His might, and the fact today that He is such a mighty and wonderful God. Today we're going to be preaching a message taken from the book of Romans chapter 8. I'm glad Paul gave us a definition of our life. Well, today you say, well, preacher, I've got a lot of struggles going on. And matter of fact, that's the title of the message, struggle. You're going through trials and difficulty and problems, and it seems like you just can't find a solution and an answer, and you're just really down to the depths of despair, discouragement, and defeat. But God said, you are more than a conqueror through him that loved you. Today, God's got something better for you than struggle. He's got something better for you than defeat. He's got a blessing for you today. Look to Jesus, and today he can turn all things around. Stay tuned for the message, more good music. Don't forget, we got some great events coming up at Fall Festival. It's going to be on November the 7th. That's going to be a great time. Yard sale items and food items and Brunswick stew and baked goods, all that. And don't miss that, November the 7th. Then on homecoming, we're looking forward, but let me back up to November the 8th. We're going to be honoring our veterans, and we're going to be remembering those who served on the foreign fields to defend our freedom. That's on November the 8th, and a special worship service on the special day of Veterans Day. Then on the 15th of November, we'll be praising the Lord over the great things in homecoming with Smokey Wilson. I just know you're going to be greatly blessed by the music, the message today, and I just believe God's got something good in store for you. So today, let's go back to the music. Shout some praise unto Him today and know that we serve a mighty and living God. If you'd like to write us, by the way, our address is on the bottom of the screen. Gethsemane Baptist Church, or you can just put GBC. And uh, that address, 411 Blue Ridge Street, Lynchburg, 24501. Drop us a line. Let us know if you're being blessed today. And we will just continue to pray and trust God's blessings for you. Now back to the worship. May God mightily bless you today. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with because of the blood of Jesus can we sing that as we saw early on the screen a video this morning about the death of our Savior the price that he paid and to know that price that he paid was for us 
that he provided a sacrifice, a holy sacrifice, that we could come into this place today and proclaim and declare that we're children of the Most High God, our lives have been changed, and we're born again, and we have something today to praise God for because now we are the children of the Most High God. Now, I know we're living in a perplexing, troublesome age and time. I know across this congregation this morning, every person in here has got some kind of struggle going on, I'm sure. But I want you to know today, in the midst of every struggle that you can encounter in this life, is the mighty presence of God who will bring you out of whatever you're in. And as we will be preaching on today from Romans 8, I like the words the way that Paul put them. This is the song, and this is the word, oh, these are the words of victory. Nay, nay in all these things, nay in every struggle, nay in every trial, nay in every sickness, nay in every heartache, nay in every worry, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So today you're standing there and you're saying, oh, preacher, I just got so many worries in my life. Oh, you just don't know the shoulder, the things that I'm shouldering and carrying through. I'm telling you today, see right here in front of me, it's 45 foot of altar. And you can come and unload everything that's in your life today and leave here with joy unspeakable and full of glory. What I'm telling you, you can leave here with victory today. Amen. Because our victory is in Jesus Christ today. So cast it all on him because you got a God who cares for you today. Thank God we have victory in the church said. Well, that's pretty weak. I said, thank God we have victory in the church said. Well, our victory is found in Jesus. Let's go ahead and sing that chorus one more time. And magnify and lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me. so long ago and I cried out for mercy back then I pled the blood of Jesus begged him to forgive my sin but I still can't forget it it just won't go away so I wept again Lord wash my sin this is all he'd say That's as far away as the east is from the west. What sin? What sin? It was gone. Very minute you could fail. Buried in a sea of forgetfulness. The heaviest thing you'll carry is a load of guilt and shame. You were never meant to bear them, so let them go in Jesus' name. Our God is slow to anger, quick to forgive our sin. So let him put them under the blood and bring them up again. Cause he'll just say, what sin, what sin, that's as far away as the east is from the west, what sin, what sin, it was gone, very minute 
Let's get into the Word. I'm in the book of Romans, chapter 8, this morning. A very important portion of Scripture, but a very important message that we find in the pages of God's Word on a single word title, struggle. Because you know what? This involves every one of you. It involves me. It involves every human on the face of this earth. There is no person that struggle free. So, well, preacher, everything's going just great right now. Well, that's great. (laughs) Enjoy the season. Because, you know, I'm not being negative, but, well, it rains on the just and the unjust, doesn't it? As the Word of God says, we all have those days of challenge in our lives. But we also know that God is a God who brings us through what we face. Now, listen to what Paul writes here, or follow me on the screen or in your Bible. He says, What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? You know, I have to remind myself of that every day. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. I like that word justified because that means that everything that was against you, even the trace is gone and God has justified you by the power of his word and the power of the blood of his son. So every stain, every blemish, everything in your life that was wrong when you called out to the God of heaven and he blotted out your transgressions. I'm glad he used that word blotted out. I'm glad he didn't say I covered your sins up. I'm glad he said I blotted them out. That means every trace is gone and you are justified as a child of God before the mighty God of heaven. He says, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Now, I want you to really hone in on these next few verses. Because not only do I find a God who's with us in the struggles that we go through, but I also find a predominant message from God of eternal security that we have in Him. Now catch these words that He talks about here in our relationship with Him. He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? First, let me just say this. You can't even separate yourself from Him. Can't do it. So He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But 
I'm glad he says this. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. For I am persuaded, meaning he's convinced there is no reason to doubt. It is a well-known fact. It is delivered and substantiated and endorsed by the word of God. So Paul said, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, not even life today, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen, Amen to the glory of God. Thank the Lord for the promise. Thank the Lord for the word. I want to begin this morning by declaring today that we were divinely designed by God to overcome. Well, preacher, I'm just in debt, I'm in difficulty, I'm in everything that you can think of that goes with all the letters of the 26 letters of the alphabet. If it has a, if it has a letter for it, I got it going on. Do you realize you have been divinely designed by God to be an overcomer? And you're walking around and carrying all the weights of the world and you're worrying yourself sick and you're in a place of difficulty and you're just absolutely wringing your life out. And God is saying, hey, 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 you're more than a conqueror. You have been divinely designed by me, God, to be an overcomer. So why are you letting these things control you today? We have been bought, purchased, redeemed today, secured by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which makes us more than a conqueror. See, it's not me just saying, hey, I'm more than a conqueror. No, there's a justification behind the process. Amen? I said there's a justification behind the process. And the justification behind the process is the fact of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so therefore today, realizing who we are in Him, the blood of Christ has made us this, this title that we today can declare that we're more than a conqueror. Now, we've been crowned champions. Well, preacher, I don't look like, and I sure, Lord, don't feel like, and sometimes I don't even act like a champion. I mean, you know, the words that I speak are words of defeat and discouragement, and I talk about everything that's wrong in my life. And it looks like all I can dream about, think about, eat every day, it looks like I just eat at the table of misery. It just seems like I'm down on the floor licking the crumbs up of every struggle and trial. Sound familiar? Yeah, that bunch over on the other pews over there on the other side, that's just them to the T. No, that's all of us. <laughs> Amen. We find ourselves today that God has said, and listen to this. God has said in his word today, and I'm paraphrasing what he's saying here, that he said, you have been crowned champions. Now listen to this. If you have been crowned a champion by the King of Glory, I believe it's time we, the people of God, start living like the champions that God said that we are. Well, we've let the world identify us and say, well, you know, if you're a Christian, if you love the Lord, you know, you're, much, you're kind of different and you're kind of weird and you're... Well, you belong in a closet somewhere. You're kind of wacky and everything else. And they put all these identifying marks on you. And, oh, Lord, if you're a Christian, you, you're just going to be poor as Job's old turkey. And you're going to walk around with a pious look on your face. And you know, you, the corners of your mouth droop down to your kneecaps. And, I mean, that's what the world says that you're supposed to look like. God said that you are a champion and your championship has been purchased by the cross of the Christ of the cross. Therefore, today, the blood of Jesus today says that we are winners in the mighty kingdom of our God. So why are you choosing a lesser road of defeat? Why are you choosing to live today as basically dirt under the devil's feet when God says, I have brought you up and I have brought you out? and I have set you at the table, you're not running around licking up the crumbs like a dog on the floor. 
when I have prepared for you a table. Folks, we need to understand, if God has called you a champion, we need to start today living the title that God has called us. Amen. Now that comes with something else. That means today you're going to have to start doing some purging, cleansing, purifying. That means you're going to have to get out of you what's in you. You've got to get out of you this mind today of defeat. You've got to get out of this mind today of over, that you've been overcome by the vices of the world. When God said you have been overcome by the power of Almighty God and you're a child of the King today, you've got to get all the sin out of you. Let me tell you what. Let me just put it in very blunt terms. You've got to get right with God. Because if you're living in defeat and discouragement and down and out all the time, well, I know we all face these things, but let me tell you what. That is not God's plan for your life. And actually, I'll just say this and just put it right there in front of you. When you're living in that attitude and that mentality today that everything is wrong in your life, folks, you are playing right into the hand of Satan and you've let today the spirit of defeat, the sin today of defeat invade your life, your ranks, your family, and you walk around discouraged. We've all done it, haven't we? But I'm glad that we've got a God that will pluck us up out of that. I'm glad that we've got a God that will take our life and change it and make us right. I'm glad there's enough blood of Jesus Christ to blot out our every transgression, to wash away our every iniquity, to alleviate our every sin, and to declare us that we're children of the Most High God, champions of the King, because today we belong to Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord some praise. Well, John or rather Paul in Romans 8, reminds us today of a topic that we don't like, but it comes to life. It comes with life. Well, Job said this. Job says, Yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. <laughs> you will not get out of life without struggle. Preacher just told us we're champions and we're children of the mighty God. And there you just told us, you just took it, pushed us right back down in that struggle. No, I'm just coming to today with the truth that these are the realities that we face, but these today are not the things that have to control us. Amen. So struggle today doesn't mean God doesn't love you. People, I've heard people say, you know, so-and-so over there. I wonder what they've done to get God mad at them. Well, it happened to Job, didn't it? His three friends came to him. They didn't come say, hey, brother, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry about your ten kids. I'm sorry about losing everything. You know, anything that we can do to help you? You know, Satan must really be on your back. But you know what people do? I wonder what they did. I wonder what they did to offend God. I wonder what they did to get God mad at them. Oh, don't get God mad at you. See, Job, I told you. Folks, I'm going to tell you right now, the mentality of the world today, that's what they want to push you into. You know, there are times in your life struggles going to come, and you know why struggle comes? It's because you're serving the one true mighty God of heaven. Amen. It's not because, and if you have sinned, and if there's things in your life that is not right, you need to get it under the blood, and you need to get it re relieved, and you need, it, need to get it cleansed, and you need to get it forgiven. But there are instances and times in our lives that we today, that's a part of our living, the process of living today. So what I'm telling you today, let me tell you what, just because you're going through struggles does not mean that God doesn't love you. Struggles where you can gain the strength. Struggle is where you can gain the strength to know what it means to be more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Amen. So it's in the struggles that you go through that sometimes you feel pushed down and you feel like, Gee whiz, am I the only person on the face of this earth that's going through these things? And then you remember, hey, there's a lot of Christians out there that are facing a lot of struggles in life. But the same God that has brought countless ones through the pages of this word, 
that have brought them through every struggle that they have faced is the same God who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will deliver you. And if you don't believe that, you go to Hebrews chapter 11, read the Hall of Fame of Faith, and see those who went through and their faith in God was a faith that centered and was anchored on the rock of ages. And they didn't give up just because they were in the midst of a struggle. Bless God. They looked up and rejoiced because they knew that their Redeemer lives. Amen. When Job was sitting in sackcloth and ashes, and his friend said, Job, what have you done? He said, shut up and leave me alone. Hallelujah. I like that. Amen. 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 You need to tell the devil and the world, shut up and leave me alone. Amen. Woo! Amen. Glory. His wife said, curse God, die, give it up. Let me tell you something, Job had enough of God in him sitting in sackcloth and ashes and everything seemingly falling apart in his life. Oh, he knew that God could trust him. And he rose up with sackcloth and ashes. And he said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Amen. I want you to know today if that same God was in the midst of the sackcloth and ashes with Job, he's in the midst of the sackcloth and ashes with you. It's time we rise up out of the defeats and the struggles of life and we declare and we let the devil know we're trusting God. We let the world know that our confidence is in the Lord. We let everyone know that we belong to him and thank God we know that our Redeemer lives because he is the high exalted King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and nothing on this world is going to change that. Amen. You know I think about the struggles that Paul went through. Paul described his personal conflicts and you read through the many things in the accounts of God's word that tells us of the struggles that he encountered. You know, we, we can understand today that conflicts will arise in our life also and none of them though, will distance us from the love of God. See, the, the fact of the matter in all the things from the shipwreck to being beaten to you name it that Paul went through in prison for the gospel and preaching the gospel and living for God, he never lost his faith and his praise before the glorious God of heaven. Things on this earth will continue to change continually. But we serve a God who will not change. For He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. The struggles that we encounter, let me tell you what. Do not take God by surprise. And when you're serving the Lord and you're being faithful and you're living for the King of kings and the Lord of lords, you better expect trouble and struggle. When you are living for God and by his word, that is lifted up in your life. The devil's not going to be happy with you. But let me tell you this also. You're not in this world to make him happy. As a matter of fact, you should be an irritant to him. Amen. But the problem with us Christians is we let the devil get to us. So we get filled with fear and intimidation and we're scared. We're going to make the devil mad. Well, bless God, you better start making him mad. Amen. I want to honor God, not Satan. I want to praise the Lord, not give any glory to the, to the devil. And today, even though you're going through the struggles and the trials of life, and let me tell you what, God has to jerk my chain occasionally about that too. And, and we go through things and situations and problems and everything else that we go through. And it's easy to get down. It's easy to get defeated. It is easy to get discouraged. And it's easy to say, man, it just looks like everything I try to do for God, the bottom falls out. It just looks like, you know, I'm trying to serve God. Well, keep on serving him, amen. Stop. Throw away your pity party. Throw away your towels today that you're wiping your tears on. Bless God, rise up. Be the man, be the woman that God's called you to be. And realize you may go through the storm, but you'll come through the storm. Amen. Amen. He will lift you up. He will bring you through. He'll see you through whatever you're encountering in life today. The question is not, are you going to face struggle? The question is, are you going to trust God in the struggle? Amen. See, you can face struggle today basically with or struggles with three assurances today. The first assurance that you've got today is what I'm holding in my hand. It's called the Word of God. You can face your struggles with this. The problem is we do not use the Word of God. We use everything. We hear, listen to everything that everybody's telling us. But folks, why don't you listen to what God has to say? 
I mean, you read through page after page, book after book, selection of scripture after selection of scripture, and you'll find in every page of this book a word of encouragement to your heart and your life. This is the word of God. And it's no value if we don't use the word of God as an assurance in our life. Not only do we have the assurance of God's word, but we also have the presence of God with us. Oh, I'm glad that we have a God who said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And I'm glad he's with us today for the long haul. He's with us in the darkness of night. He's with us in the valleys of life. He's with us on the mountaintops of life. He's with us when the sun is shining. He's with us when it's pitch dark and you can't see your hand in front of you. He's with you when you go through the valley, the shadow of death, and you can know the Lord is with you. You can know that his rod and his staff, they comfort you. You can know that he's prepared a table before you, even in the presence of your enemies. He knows today your cup can run over. He knows today surely goodness and mercy can follow you all the days of your life. Thank God we have such a God on our side because we have the mighty presence of our God. And let me tell you what, God does not have any losses in his column. It's all wins because we are the children of the most high God. Amen. Hallelujah. Give him some praise. So we have the word of God. We have the presence of God. And we have then thirdly, the power of God. That's an assurance. I like the way that Isaiah put it, and I use this scripture every day, and it's become a common language in my vocabulary. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. Why? Because the power of God's on me. Amen. Let me tell you what, see, when you let your light so shine before men that they'll see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let me tell you who else sees that. Satan sees the power of God on your life. And you know what? He'll get to a point. He'll say, whew, I don't think I'm going to go messing around that bunch. Whoo, I don't think I want to go fooling around that church. Whoo, I don't think I want to mess around with that Christian because he knows every time that he does, he's going to walk away with another black eye. He's going to walk away with another tooth loosened or knocked out. Hallelujah. Jesus knocked his teeth out at Calvary. But brother, let me tell you what, hallelujah. I don't mind giving the devil a bloody nose. I don't mind giving the devil a black eye in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Because the power of God that lives and dwells within you is the power of the Holy Ghost of God that today is a part of your life. It is time we start employing today the power of God against the forces of evil. When you're going through the times of seemingly defeat, remember God will lift you up. Remember God is on your side. Remember God is a way maker. Remember today, God can do the impossible because that's the power of our God. Amen. So which are you today, a complainer or a champion? Oh, but preacher, you just don't know. Complain, complain, complain. Complain, complain, complain. And complain, complain, complain. Well, let me ask you, what is complaining getting you? Zero. Nothing. It's not getting you anywhere, but pushing you further down in what you're already in. You've got to stop co your complaining today and start learning the fact that you are a champion of God. Are you a wimp or are you a warrior? The devil beat me up. <laughs> Wimp. God hasn't called you to a position of being a wimp. You're a mighty warrior in the kingdom of God. You're clothed and you have on the vesture today of the armor of Almighty God that Paul tells us about in Ephesians 6. He talks about your head. It has the helmet of salvation on it. He talks about the breastplate of righteousness. He talks about your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. He talks about your loins that are girt about with truth. He talks about the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit. Woo! 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 The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And then you grab up your lance of prayer and you pray through what you're going through because you know you got a mighty God who can do nothing today that's impossible. He's a God that can turn every impossibility into a possibility. Amen. That's the power of our God. That's the power of our God. 
You know, it's hard to get the power of God involved in your life if you're not in the power book. Amen. You want power in your life? Here it is. Bless God. Let me tell you what it'll do. It'll be a friend. It'll be a shield. It'll be a covering. It will go before you and prepare the way. It will shut the doors of your past. It will open new doors of opportunity. It will provide for you for every need that you've got in your life. Could I go on? I could, but let me tell you today, if you will take this word and put it in your heart, let me tell you what, friend, you won't be sinning against God. You'll be shining for God. Amen. Amen. And the church said. So John said in 1 John 5, 3 through 5. Now listen to this carefully. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Mm. Well, you know, it's hard to be victorious when you're not keeping the word of God. And his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is, who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. So the faith that overcomes the world today is a faith today that basically does three things. One, it sees the eternal realities today. Oh, listen, we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. But even looking through that glass darkly with some things that will come up in our life that seemingly will try to pull our attention off of God. I, I know the eternal realities of what this book has said. I know if I'll fight a good fight and finish my course and keep the faith, henceforth there will be laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the righteous judge shall give to me in that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. Amen. See, you've got to see the eternal realities today. Secondly, today, you've got to see the, 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 the you've got to experience the power of God. And I'm not going to go back and pre preach what I just preached. But listen, the power of God is in the Word of God, but it can only be experienced when you live out the plan of God for your life. Amen. And third today, loves Christ to such an extent that the world has no attraction. You should have been with us at 10 o'clock this morning. Oh, my Lord, the preacher, he taught on hating the world. Yeah, he really did. I was here and heard him. Y'all going to pick that up in a minute. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. Where's your attention and your focus today? On the world? On the God who created the world. Amen. Love Christ to such an extent that the world has nothing for you. I'm going to tell you right now, when you've tasted of the things of God, anything else will not satisfy and when the Lord has touched your life, that's all that matters. So the only thing worth staying connected to is your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because everything else will pass away. But that which is done for God will carry you through to your eternity and bring about eternal rewards for your soul. As long as you have faith in Jesus Christ, nothing can separate you today from being an overcomer in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Faith in Christ today helps you to live above the circumstances of life so that you today can be that overcomer. Now listen, maybe you've blown it in the past. Today's a new day. Today's a new opportunity. Get out of your past, get it under the blood, and press forward. Amen. So we live in a day when it seems like, you know, every time you ask people, Hi, how you doing? And you know what the response is? Well, under the circumstances, oh, we're struggling. <laughs> we're struggling, but God is faithful. Oh, baloney. Folks, if you have to make yourself say that, it's not from your heart. You know, this is what the world wants us to say. Well, under the circumstances, I, I guess I'm doing the best that I can. God did not send his son Jesus to a cross that you could just survive 
or say under the circumstances. God has sent His Son, Jesus Christ, the King of glory, to the cross so that you could live the abundant life. So that you today could have a Spirit-filled life. So that you today could have the blessed life. So that you today could have the victorious life. So that you today could have the overcomer's life. That's what God has provided for you and I today. The reason some of you are not living the overcomer's life is because you have never come over to Christ. You've never been born again. Oh, preacher, I've heard that phraseology and terminology for years. Born again. Born again. Born again. Everybody's born again. Everybody's running for political office. Born again. I mean, everybody in, in the jailhouse is born again. Every church on every corner, they're all born again. Well, if you believe that lie, I'm going to tell you not every person is born again. Today, it's not the name on the church, and it's not where you are. It's who you're trusting. Folks, if you've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart and your life and save your soul and redeem you today, you're lost or you're going straight to hell. But I'm glad there's a power today called the power of God that will snatch you out of the clutches of Satan and deliver your soul and birth you into the family of God and make you a child of the King. Amen. I've been born again. Yes, I have. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Let me tell you what. I know what the Lord has done for me. I know what he brought me out of. I know what he's bringing me to. I know what he's already done for me. I know today I wouldn't take nothing today for the salvation that he has wrought and worked in my heart and my life and making me a child of the king today. And if you're saved today, you ought to shout the victory and give God the glory and the honor and the praise. And today give the devil another black eye because you're a child of the king and the devil can't do nothing about it. He cannot rob you, snatch from you, or take from you what God has put in you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Rejoice that you are a child of the King. Praise the Lamb of God that you've been delivered and you've been snatched today out of Satan's control and you belong to Almighty. Y'all stand up over there. Bless God. Let's give the Lord some praise for He is worthy to be praised. Amen. Glory to God. You may be seated. When you live in the power today, and when you live in the might of Jesus, you can say, as Jeremiah declared, A Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Zechariah said, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us not forget the words of Jesus. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Have you forgotten today that you have access to the great God of heaven? Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. And thank God in the mighty name of Jesus today, there's power in our prayer that we can call on a God who will hear the cry and hear the call and move on the scene and change things immediately. Amen. See, God's Word is declared today, you have been blessed. You have been blessed beyond measure. You have been blessed with an abundance. You've been blessed with the power of the Holy Ghost. You've been blessed today with every need supplied. You've been blessed beyond measure today. And I believe it's time we, the people of God, start honoring God and stop complaining about what we don't have and start thanking God for what we do have. And if you don't have anything else in this world and you've got Him, you've got everything that you need. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. For under the circumstances... Mm. Under the circumstances, he is still El Shaddai. He is the one who is all sufficient. You have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Under the circumstances, he is the Lord your shepherd and you shall not want. Under the circumstances, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer and my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Amen. Under the circumstances, I have a God who can move mountains of impossibility. I have a God who can calm the raging storms of this world in the midnight hour. He died. He rose again. Hallelujah. He ascended and praised the Lord. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father. He's coming again today and He's declared for your life and my life we can be more than a conqueror through Him because He is that mighty God. Amen. 
So in the circumstances of need today, my God shall supply you every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus our Lord. In the circumstances of worry today, greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. Some of you need to grab that. In the circumstances of loneliness, I hear people say, I live alone. No, you don't. If you're born again, you've got Father, Son, and Holy Ghost living with you. Amen. Thank God, he says, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. In the circumstances even of death, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In your struggles, you've got to remember today, Jesus Christ is alive. And the same power that raised him up today from the dead is alive in you and I today. Amen. Paul said we're troubled. Glory. But we're not distressed. Paul said we are perplexed, but we're not in despair. Paul said we are persecuted, but we're not forsaken. Paul said we are cast down, but we're not destroyed. Amen. In our struggles, we are overcomers today, friend. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Amen. So God has won for us through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So why are you choosing the option of living in struggles and defeat all the time? When God's made a better way for you today. The devil will fight you. And let me tell you what. He fights you with unnecessary roughness. He is an opponent. But he is an opponent who's already been defeated. Amen. And thank God the devil is not the winner. But every time you slip aside and you fall into the traps of discouragement and defeat and you let the devil just push down struggle on top of you and it's like, oh, I just, you know, I just, oh, oh. And you're trying to bear it when Jesus said you can cast all that load of care and trouble and struggle on him, Jesus, because he cares for you. Amen. Folks, today, the devil is not the winner. He is the defeated foe today. And let me tell you what, the devil doesn't have the victory. You do. The devil doesn't have the victory. You do. The devil doesn't have the victory. We do. To me, an overcoming and struggle, you've got to be a warrior of the cross. Amen. You've got to fight the good fight of faith. The principle today of our enemy today is not flesh and blood. As Paul states in Ephesians 6, he says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers and the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. See today, our ultimate enemy today is Satan. He comes today to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But that's not where it ends. Hallelujah. There's a conjunction called B-U-T, but... But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Look at the moral condition of our nation. Look at the compromise of the truth today in our nation of the Word of God. Spiritual warfare is at hand. This is no time to knuckle under, run and hide in your closet and pull the blanket over your head and let your knees tremble and shake. It's time that we've got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, church. It's time we've got to lift up the banner, the blood-stained banner, and it's time that we pronounce today that Jesus is Lord. Amen. You cannot sit at a peace table with a prince of darkness and win. Stop entertaining the devil in your home and in your life. In the warfare of our faith today, we've got to be committed to the victory. And it means you're going to have to go through the trial. You're going to have to go through the trenches. You're going to have to get on the battlefield. But thanks be unto God, we've got a God who's already won the victory. Amen. David stepped out on the battlefield. Guess what he told Goliath? He didn't say, oh God, please, please, big man, have mercy on me. He said, the battle is the Lord. The battle belongs to God. He said, I'm just out here to carry out the plan that God's got for your life. You're going down, big boy. Buster Brown, you're going to hit the ground. Amen. I'm going to cut your head off with your own sword, and I'm going to serve it on a platter, and this is all about to whoo, happen right now. He th flung the rock. God did the rest. And brother, let me tell you what. That champion of the cause of the Philistines was brought down to death. 
Let me tell you what, we've got a champion today called Satan of the world that tries to intimidate and tries today to saturate our lives today with all the lies of hell. But I'm glad today we may be standing on the battlefield, but we've got one and we see the cross. And thank God the one that hung on the cross has already won our victory and provided a way where we had no way. Amen. This is what our God has done for us. I believe it's time today we start giving him the honor that's due his name. In the warfare of faith, we've got to be committed to victory. We're called today to endure the hardships like a good soldier of the cross. We're called today to suffer even for the gospel. We today are called to persevere and not quit. We're called today to conquer. We're called today to be triumphant. We're called today to be filled today, not with fear, but with faith in God. We're called today that the fact that our victory is not a coincidence, our victory is a confidence that we have in Christ. Amen. As a child of God, you must be committed to the victory that he has for you, and the victory of a warrior comes today through the faithful living that we have for Christ. Amen. You must lean today on him. And you've got to learn today the word of God and apply it to every circumstance of your life. Amen. The Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. And so the devil will make every effort today to undermine today or destroy our confidence in the sword or the Word today, which is the Word of God. But the power of the Word of God is a weapon against the forces of evil. And if you're not using it, that's why you're walking around defeated. That's why you're walking around and everybody's told you, loser, loser. When today God has said, you're not a loser. The blood has washed away your sin. Your blood, the blood of Jesus has written your name in heaven. The blood of Jesus has given you the authority and the promise of his word that today you are more than a conqueror through him that loves you. Amen. 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 You know, the blood of Jesus is a weapon. And today, praying in Jesus' name is a weapon. Believing by faith is a weapon. God's internal peace that surpasses all understanding is a weapon. And even our salvation is a weapon. See, we're not fighting to win. (laughs) Our victory has already been won. And our victory is in Christ. Understand, we are in a war. But we are to celebrate the victory. Preacher, I can't celebrate. I'm just too overcome. If you'd get overcome by Jesus, you could learn to celebrate. That's why some of you sitting here this morning, I mean, if you had somebody had written and tattooed across your forehead, worried person, it could not be any more evident in your life. Now y'all start to smile at me. You are in war. But we can celebrate the victory. We can celebrate the victory. Something's going to hit you in a minute. You can celebrate the victory. Today is your day to stop worrying and start celebrating. Today is your day to stop complaining and start celebrating. Today is your day to stop being fearful and start celebrating. Today is your day to stop being today reconciled to struggle and start celebrating. Amen. Hallelujah. See, here's the celebration. Our celebration is not in our flesh. Our celebration is in the exalted Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And folk, we have reason to celebrate. Let me tell you, when you see him face to face, you're going to celebrate. I'm going to have more fun in heaven by seeing all these starched neck Christians who wouldn't give Jesus a holy grunt on this side, and they're going to be absolutely broken, and and the Holy Ghost is going to hit them so hard. Bless God, they're going to run for about 10,000 years just up and down the gold street of heaven. Hallelujah. (laughs) I'm just picking on you. We celebrate because the cross is empty. We celebrate because the tomb is empty. We celebrate because the throne is occupied. We celebrate because Jesus has triumphed over the death Hell, the grave, and Satan. We celebrate because he has forgiven us and saved our soul. We celebrate because he still today can forgive, he can still heal, and he can still restore. We celebrate because 
Hallelujah. He's coming again. And in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. See, struggles will cease in that day. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And you've got to recognize the source of victory. And your source of victory is him, Christ. He is our only source. Your struggle may be greater than you, but it's not greater than the God who lives and dwells within you. Amen. I close with this thought. You can receive the victory that you need today. You can receive the victory that you need today. What you've got to come and receive is the victory for your life that he has for you. For see, there's no victory without him. This is not reading those pumped up books to try to pump you up in the flesh. This is not listening to a motivational speaker on your CD player as you're cruising down the highway. This is the power of the God who lives and dwells within you. You have got to let him be honored in your life because there will be no victory until you give it all to him. Give it all to him. And I don't know what's on your heart today, but here's a God at this altar that will take whatever you're willing to give him. And he's willing today to give, give you his victory and to make you more than a conqueror if you'll come to him today. Father, we're grateful today for your word. Thank you for a place of worship that we can come and hear the word of God and receive the message of God and be changed by the power of God as we stand to our feet right now, oh Lord, I don't know what need may be resting on the hearts of people today, but I do know there's a God in this room right now that, Lord, in the trials and the struggles of life, this God can give a victory. Will you come right now? Will you come right now? You can arise through all the troubles and struggles of your life, and you can come to this mighty God who will turn all things around. You come. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Pour out your spirit right now upon your people, Lord. Oh, God, just visit each heart and each life. Draw to these altars, Lord, each person that needs to come. Oh, Lord, set them at liberty today. Set them free. Make them that conqueror in Christ that you desire for them to be. Pour out your spirit upon them. You come.